What's going on, everyone? So this is a very news driven market at the moment. So regardless of how good a technical setup looks overnight, there could be news that comes out after hours or in the pre-market that completely shatters any bullish momentum that was made. And uh, that's how we're going to have to trade the market moving forward. So right now, in terms of swinging, it doesn't make sense. It's it doesn't make sense to swing heavily in terms of uh, bullish direction, um, especially with you know World War Three right around the corner apparently. So uh, in today's video, we're gonna go over the spy, the Nasdaq, the IWM, the thirty-year bond, the crypto markets because Bitcoin also fell very very heavily today, and Bitcoin has been a precursor to the movement and the strength in the overall market. So. That's something that we're going to look at today as well, along with the large tech stocks. All right. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. All right. So number one, the SPY made a huge downward move today, uh, very clearly because, you know, uh, Russia, apparently Russian backed forces attacked um, Ukraine, the eastern borders of Ukraine. So that is not a good sign. So the market responded accordingly. So all of the bullishness that was basically Everyone was worried about the Fed meetings, etc. Those were very, very bullish. That was very, very bullish news. But now the main reason why the market is falling right now is the tensions that are going on between Russia and Ukraine. So that needs to be monitored very, very nicely. Um, so we filled a gap today as well on the SPY and on the NASDAQ. We, we filled downward gaps. So that's a very, very good sign, right? Um, but right now this is a very very bearish setup in my opinion so the rsi very clearly moving downwards bearish right the macd this is more neutral to bearish so this is not the most bullish setup because the macd blue line is going higher so you can see this blue uh, number right here okay the blue macd it was uh, negative 3.35. And then it increased to negative 3.05. So the MACD blue line is increasing, yet the price of the SPY is decreasing. That is, that is pretty bearish. But the reason why I am uh, neutral, I'm going to put neutral to bearish in the spreadsheet, is because the overall momentum of the SPY, the yellow MACD line is still bullish and still moving on upwards. So for now, this is not the, this is, uh, this is pretty bearish. This whole setup here is very bearish. Tomorrow, the very, very important levels of support that need to hold are going to be 434.74. And then, of course, uh, 433.34. So these two levels here, we're back. We're back to this choppy zone. So if we can come and start trading within this zone here, um, that is not going to be very good for the SPY, and that can signal more downside and a break of these lows. And that looks, if, I mean, I don't see uh, tensions de-escalating anytime soon, but literally, I mean, that's going to be what the whole market is going to be waiting to see whether or not Russia and Ukraine can not go to war. <laughs> so um, those are the levels for the SPY. <clears throat> uh let's go ahead and take a look at the iwm all right so the iwm was one of the main reasons why we initially began to be bullish uh, a few days ago in the spy and the nasdaq all right so today clearly we failed to hold above this 20150 level but yet we didn't close below 200 so that's a good sign um the rsi very clearly falling the macd is also very clearly falling, yet the overall yellow MACD momentum indicator is showing still upward momentum. So now, I mean, 200 on the IWM is going to be very, very important. And again, the IWM was the main indicator or the main um, index that was basically signaling strength to the SPY and the NASDAQ. If the IWM starts to break down below 200, then um, that would basically put the SPY uh probably below 433 um and uh, yeah, uh sorry below uh 434.74 so that is a uh, very uh it's gonna be pretty interesting to see moving forward but basically this is not a bullish setup 
Um, there's nothing bullish about this. We need to we need to have some sort of confirmation um, for like a retest of support and then a break above into resistance. That that is going to be the only time we would go and swing some calls overnight. But then again, it would have to be a very very small amount uh, because right now everything is news driven, regardless of how good a technical setup looked. News about Russia attacking uh, Ukraine uh, makes everything just go away. So right now, holding overnight heavy positions does not make sense uh, unless it's, you know, GameStop or, uh, you know, the other stocks. So, yeah, there's that. And um, this just doesn't look good. I guess everything is very, very similar to the spy as well. Um, and that's that's really it so there's that for the iwm now let's go ahead and take a look at the large tech stocks the 30-year bond and the nasdaq all right this is apple very bearish as well um technically we did close above 168.34 but we failed and we broke below 170.73 this uh trend line here the the bull flag um the rsi is pointing downwards which is bearish and again, very similar to the SPY, the MACD blue line is moving upwards and it's increasing, yet the price of Apple is decreasing. But again, you know, we can see that it filled the gap to the downside. And now we need to see if this level of support can hold at 168.34. If it can hold and reclaim 170.70, that is going to be pretty good. And it would signal potential strength in the rest of the market. But for now, Apple same boat as um spy uh microsoft bearish as well um the next level of support for uh wow so it would be approximately like 288.50 and then if 288.50 doesn't hold then it's going to be 285 so uh microsoft looks bearish as well uh let's take a look at google google clearly looks very very bearish uh, we close below a very important level of support at 2660. Uh, the MACD looks bearish. You can see that it's increasing, yet the price of Google is decreasing. And the RSI is clearly bearish as well. And Amazon. Also, very similar, looks bearish. The MACD is... This is disgusting. <laughs> this is disgusting. Usually when this happens, though, um, there is like a... A down day but then most of the time when the macd looks like this it reverses back up so um sometime intraday tomorrow there could be like a green pop on amazon usually when the macd looks like this that's what happens but the rsi is moving downwards the price is falling and we broke down below support we could also take a look at tesla <clears throat> tesla very similar uh everything is red we close below everything closed below support um, all of the MACD indicators look very, very bearish, and the RSIs also look very, very bearish. So we could go ahead and literally fill that out for all of these. So there is that for the uh, large tech stocks. So when the large tech stocks don't look good, obviously the overall market is not going to look good either. And there's that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the 30-year bonds. So the bonds, they found support, right? But this RSI is very, very sensitive. And that is not what we want to see here. Um, the RSI being sensitive like this is not a good sign. Because if we continue, basically, if we continue going up at this momentum on the RSI from 32.4, you can see the RSI number here. From 32.4 to 40.11, that's an 8-point move in the RSI. There's another 30 points until we become overbought on the RSI. If these little small pops essentially cause the RSI to move 8 points at a time upwards, then what's going to end up happening is by the time the bonds get over here, basically the RSI would be overbought. So that's why it's not the best sign when we see this much sensitivity on a green day. What would be very, very bullish is, yes, we had this green day, but we would want to see the RSI barely move upwards. 
that would be the most bullish. But the fact that we sharply moved upwards along with the sharp price increase, that's not that's not the most bullish. All right, so I mean, it's not the most bullish, right? But then we, at the end of the day, we did hold this 150.21 level of support. Uh, the MACD indicator is now about to cross upwards. So in the short term, as this cross up, crosses upwards, this should be bullish. All right. And then again, what needs to happen is the blue MACD line needs to continue moving upwards and um, become very overbought. So we need to cross upwards and lift this yellow MACD momentum indicator. This yellow MACD line, you can see that it's moving downwards, right? But as the blue line moves upwards, right? It needs to average out and bring the yellow MACD line upwards as well. And the only way that would happen is if we really, really move upwards like much more and uh, eventually cause the yellow MACD line to move upwards as well, which would cause the momentum of the 30 year bond to start moving upwards. And that's what we need to see. Um, for now, 150.21 held. 153.07 is going to be the next level of resistance. And really, that's it for the um, large tech stocks and 30-year bond. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ, which is down 2.97% today. All right, here's the NASDAQ. But as I'm making the video, Bitcoin is falling very, very heavily. And uh, I see something bullish coming out of Bitcoin, which could be bullish for the rest of the market. So very quickly, uh, here is <laughs> the NASDAQ. Clearly looks very, very bearish. Um, we close below 347.38. And now this next level of support that needs to hold is going to be 343.89. If that level does not hold, then we are going to come back and retest these three very, very important levels of support between 338.22 and 340.76. That's going to be very, very important for the NASDAQ to hold. Um, to the upside, if you want upside targets for intraday levels, 350.34. Is going to be level of resistance and then tomorrow to reclaim this uh bull flag is going to be approximately 353.88 so if we can reclaim those levels to the upside that would be good and bullish but those are the downwards targets you can clearly see the rsi is bearish this macd indicator is also clearly bearish uh the number went from negative 2.55 to negative 2.42 so it's increasing while the price of the nasdaq fell three percent so that is pretty bearish um from a technical like momentum standpoint so this is not looking too good um this war uh war news is really really bad for the overall stock market but you know that's the overall stock market right but then we need to look at what bitcoin is doing as well to get a good gauge on uh the strength so bitcoin clearly you know falling very heavily right now right we're at our lows for the day and we fell below this forty-one thousand level and we also fell below forty thousand five hundred. but what is interesting is it's very very good to see uh bitcoin falling like this right very clearly obviously it's this is a bearish move right but what we want to see is a RSI sharply falling down like this. That is very, very good because a super bearish thing would be if we had a huge red candle like this, yet the RSI looked like this. So if the RSI looked like that and it barely made a sharp move, yet we had a very sharp move to the downside, that would be very bearish. But now the fact that we are falling very sharply on the RSI in conjunction with the fall in Bitcoin. That's a good sign. So now the main level of support that needs to hold overnight uh, is going to be this 39,600 level. And if 39,600 can hold and we can bounce off of that level, that would be very good. But this momentum is basically showing that we can fall very easily and break down below 39,500 come back retest potentially this trend line here or this trend line here and this zone is approximately going to be 37,000 to 38 
500. So if overnight we fall to 37 to 38.5 overnight and bounce off of those levels and find support, that could be very, very bullish for the overall stock market. And um, yeah, man, this weekend is going to be very, very interesting. I don't see the point in holding anything over the weekend unless it's a very, very small position. Um, because again, like any sort of news is changing the trajectory of the market, no matter how bullish a setup looks. But yeah, man, this is, uh, this is when patience really, really pays off. And um, this is, these are defining moments in your trading career. If you try to bulldoze your way through trades and try to make money like forcibly every single day when there isn't a clear defined reason, all right, you have to learn from your mistakes. And uh, this, these are the times when, regardless of how good your charting and everything looks, you, you can see firsthand um, the overall uh, the effect of news and macroeconomic news on the stock market. So uh, there's that. There's my thought process for uh, Bitcoin and putting it all together. Um. And uh, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.